So as part of our conversation in the news section, there were a couple things that we didn't actually get to. So we're going to give them to you now in little shorter spurts. Uh, Mike, talk to us a little bit about Hurricane, Her Hurricane Harvey and how it's affecting NASA right now. So yeah, um, as many of you watching have probably heard, Hurricane Harvey uh, hit the east coast of Texas this week and has been causing lots of damage. And just south of Houston, one of the major cities in Texas that have been hit the hardest, uh, just so happens to be NASA's Johnson Space Center, where the American Mission Control for the International Space Center is located. And go ahead and roll this video that uh, um, has been collected. NASA and a lot of other government agencies and partnerships, including the, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the NOAA, AA, have been using satellite and radar imagery to track the path of the storm as well as get all the data on the rainfall, the raising water levels, wind speeds, and et cetera, to help all of the emergency personnel and government agencies respond to this national disaster. Now, going back to Houston and NASA's Johnson Space Center, um, there were a couple images that were taken by an ESA astronaut, the European Space Agency astronaut, Thomas Pesquet, who is currently at NASA Johnson, and they've been saying that essentially NASA NASA Johnson is flooded, and flight controllers and other essential personnel are camping out there in mission control. You can see a little makeshift bed that they already have there. And thankfully, they've been able to maintain contact with the International Space Station, despite being on an island there. They have their own independent generators and ha uh, have the electricity and the bandwidth needed to stay in contact with the International Space Station. Now, despite the controllers still being there and gonna, who's going to stay there through over the weekend, NASA Johnson is officially closed until at least Monday and after Monday they're gonna take it from a day-to-day -day basis to see whether or not it's safe for other uh, NASA employees to either come to NASA Johnson or for the people who are already there to leave NASA Johnson so uh, in any case they're uh, over this weekend uh, something that they're doing today actually is they're gonna be watching some uh, thruster firings at the station to raise the thrust uh, the station's orbit slightly which will put it in the proper trajectory needed for three crew members to depart next Saturday to land in Kazakhstan. So uh, with that whole thing going on, um, and although the flooding around NASA Johnson hasn't reached any uh, critical buildings yet, uh, there is something I did want to mention that's going on there. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, the $8.6 billion successor to the Hubble Space Telescope, is sealed in one of the huge thermal vacuum chambers at Johnson's for extensive pre-flight tests. And so far, NASA has said that, that uh, the the weather isn't going to be posing any threats, and even though it's uh, very costly, that they are that they have no concerns. Which, despite my trust and faith in NASA, suddenly makes me very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, aside from that, and with the whole contact going on, there's lots of other uh, mission control centers all over the world. Uh, there is the uh, Korolyov Mission Control Center, Russia's Mission Control Center, which is near Moscow, which can stay in contact with the International Space Station, as well as the uh, Europe. European uh, uh, Columbus Control Center, which is uh, it, it's near Munich, Germany, and there's also, of course, the uh, Sakuba Space Center near Tokyo, Japan, all which are the other primary mission controllers for the International Space Station. So, uh, even if worst case scenario happened and they lost power completely at NASA Johnson, we don't have anything to worry about with the International Space Station and losing control or, or it suddenly starting to, you know. Just go out of control and, and put the astronauts at risk there. So everything's going to be fine, even if a worst case scenario plays out. But I thought it was still really cool and really admirable that uh, the people who have uh, kind of gotten stuck there are doing so willingly and are working hard through uh, through all of this to to keep things going. It's, you may not know the answer to this, but let's just say Johnson Space Center did go dark. Uh, would, there, would there while there are other um, NASA mission control center or mission control centers around the world, would there be a gap, a small gap in coverage as the uh, orbiting laboratory goes around? Like would they no longer have any coverage over the U.S. for like 15 minutes or something like that? Not necessarily. There actually are other um, kind of... Uh, like ground stations? I don't know the exact word to say it, but there's other stations around the United States. Like, of course, there's NASA Kennedy that has a connection to the International Space Station. In Canada, they have their mission control center, but that's usually just to do stuff with the, the Canadian robotic arm. But that is another uh, United States, or excuse me, North American spot where they can have control for it. And I believe that there's also a kind of backup facility uh, near White Sands, New Mexico. So there's a couple other facilities that, although aren't used primarily, 
are available in the United States and at, at least North America to continue coverage if NASA Johnson does completely go dark. Great. Thank you so much, Space Mike. All right, that's a quick little news snippet. If you want more news, head on over to uh, Space <laughs> Tomorrow Orbit 10. I almost said Space Speedcast. Tomorrow Orbit 10, <laughs> episode uh, 32 with this last week. Uh, we had a bunch of other space news as well as special guest Dave Maston who came on to talk about mass and space systems. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. That helps us a great deal on YouTube. And remember to watch our next live show. Uh, that's every Saturday at 1800 Coordinated Universal Time.